On this edition of Around BCC, BCC unveils a new high-tech yet relaxed component to its library. Putting together a theater production takes more than just great acting. BCC student artists on display in downtown Fall River. And we have a local alum who used BCC to round out her education. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. Much has been made about the difficult financial times we all face, Bristol Community College included. Despite the challenges of dwindling resources, BCC remains committed to improving student learning and maximizing student success. Case in point, the unveiling last month of the new Rogers Cyber Cafe located in the college's Eileen Farley Learning Resources Center. Students at BCC now have a new social learning space with the opening of the Rogers Cyber Cafe. Through a generous $100,000 donation from the Rogers Foundation, the Cyber Cafe creates a learning environment that many students of today find more conducive to learning. Frawley Learning Resources Center Director Sai Chinaswamy says the cafe fits well into the fabric of today's libraries. It is critical because uh, the student dynamic is changing and uh, you know students want convenience and uh, a big part of a cyber uh, cafe like this is the availability of additional computers and plug-ins playstations for laptops and uh, our students are uh, you know changing their using more computers so I think it's a, you know it's an important part of uh, where libraries are heading. Vice President of Academic Affairs Dr. Sarah Garrett agrees that the Cyber Cafe fits well into the mission of BCC. This is definitely in keeping with our mission of access and it provides students the opportunity to have an environment that's just conducive to learning where they can come in a very relaxed setting have access to state-of-the-art technology and readily assist, ready assistance from our LRC staff. So when they're working on their assignments, they have that type of support system right there, readily available to them. This is about the best in academia today. And so I'm very excited for the students. Chinaswamy adds that not only are physical attributes of libraries changing, but so are its learning resources. There are a couple of things which are happening in libraries. One is uh, libraries are in a hybrid phase as, part of the, as far as collection goes. Now we have our print collections as well as online collections. Now the second phase is uh, collaborative learning. Right now collaborative learning and group work is a big part of uh, student success at Bristol Community College and uh, the space right here would be used for collaborative learning and there's you know quiet spaces in the library for individual study as well so as far as the space dynamic goes it is it is also a hybrid of uh, collaborative learning as well as uh, quiet spaces for individual study. Students Scott Algavario and Andrea Frazier both feel that the creation of the Cyber Cafe is a good move. I think it's a great addition to this school and definitely I will use it. Um, it's going to help a lot of the students. Uh, more of a relaxing spot just to try and get away from student life and all the other hassles and just more to relax and actually try and get some work done. I'll get to kind of do my work more I guess because um, usually the libraries sometimes it's like really packed but this gives us like more another place to hang out and to do work and stuff like that. So. The Cyber Cafe is equipped with 12 computer terminals connected to the web and provides wireless internet access for those students who own their own laptop. Dr. Garrett believes the atmosphere created within the cafe will do more than just positively impact students academically. So often on the community college campuses, students don't have many opportunities where they can sit down and exchange time of um, information with their with their fellow students because they're working, they have families. Not only in higher ed, but you can't go to any of the, um, the, the bookstores today without having a cyber cafe. 
students are used to using the technology. They want to have ready, ready access to the technology. And to be able to do that on their own college campus in such a wonderful, beautiful, beautiful environment as this, this is what the students deserve. Reflective of its style, the Rogers Cyber Cafe at BCC also houses vending machines to satisfy students' snacking needs. Remember when food or drinks weren't allowed in the library? Well, those times have changed. When we go to the theater, the focus for many people are the actors on stage. But without those who work behind the scenes to build the sets, design the costumes, and set the stage lighting, the show cannot go on. And BCC has a program geared to those hidden heroes. Actors in the theater are told to break a leg when it comes to their performance. But there are dozens of workers at a theater production who break their back to make sure the show is a success. Part of the BCC theater curriculum is a set of courses dedicated to the technical side of the art. Theater Department Director Rylan Brenner says most students interested in the theater immediately are attracted to the artistic side of the business. A lot of students go into acting thinking that that's what they want to do and then they realize well maybe that's not what they want to do so they can they have the opportunity to explore other areas they can become designers they can become um, grant writers they can become artistic directors of, of theaters they can learn how to create their own pieces that's what we do here also so um, they, we try to give, I try to give, when I created the program and, I, and, and um, I was asked to create a theater program here, I really believed that a theater program would include both areas of the theater, the, the uh, technical area and the um, artistic area. The technical theater program at BCC includes courses in scenic design, costume design, lighting, sound and other elements of theater production. Jim Petty instructs students in some of these elements and says when it comes to scenic design, the skills learned can be used in other areas outside of the theater. It's really a very varied multiple disciplinary kind of field because it deals with construction and, and just the creative process, creative thought. So a lot of times people who are trained specifically in scenic design will graduate and move on to careers in uh, television, movie, uh, even things like rock shows and venues, I mean, you watch these music videos and things like that, uh, live performances, they're very elaborate sets now. Um, even things like politics, you look at the recent political debates and the uh, conventions that they had, they have sets, really. Um, and so scenic design kind of lends itself to all those different fields. Sid Redfield instructs students in the art of costume design and says that field presents its share of opportunities. Costume is certainly a huge part of technical theater and anyone who is looking for a career in the theater um, and someone who likes to sew, likes to working with their hands and um, you know could certainly look at costume design as a way of using their creativity um, with clothing, with fabric, with color. Um, it's a little bit less competitive than the like fashion world than current fashion design um, and I think that it also has a lot of variety to offer in terms of what you need to do um, to actually carry through the design. Brenner says that when students enter the program they're introduced to both the artistic and technical side of theater. Petty says that usually over time even the acting students become interested in some of the theater's technical elements. Most students, when they come into a theater program, you see the actors, you know, you see the director. It's a very um, prominent part of the, the field. And that's where the first allure is because uh, you get the applause at the end of the show. But after you get involved, there, there is an increased interest in technical. And I've had many of the actors come in and try to lend a hand with the construction. They just they find an interest in it. Um, because the more you work with it, the more you realize how necessary that is. Um, they say without techies, actors would stand naked on a dark stage with no set. And that's true. You know, we, we're a bigger part of the process. And uh, when the Broadway techies went on strike, everything on Broadway shut down. Uh, and you know, that was a trigger to a lot of our actors here saying, oh yeah, there is a second half to this theater process. It's not just about the actors. And it's nice to see them coming in and showing interest in our field. 
Technical theater student Rawad Sarkis, who also acts, says student actors at BCC appreciate and need to be aware of all elements of putting together a show. Actors in BCC, um, they help with the strike. They know everything. If you introduce some of the actors, they know about lighting. And they know we're all like in this field and we're all like a, a company. Either it's um, acting or it's um, technical or so... It's good for the actor to know what's happening behind what just not acting. Like, it's good for the actor to know the lights. How would he, like, if he's having conversation with a light designer, so at least he will have, like, an idea of how the light works, where it should be, where he should stand, why they have a blackout, why they have all these stuff on stage. Also with the set, too. Brenner says that students interested in the theater who think they do not have the skills to succeed often find themselves working within one of the many fields available to them. You have a lighting designer. There's more competition in that area than a sound designer, which is a relatively new field in the theater. Sound design was great in the movies for years and years and years since sound came into the movies. But in the theater, it's being used as a real profession now. So how do you prepare for that? There's not that many sound design they're starting to spring up in a lot of colleges, but there haven't been that many sound design programs in colleges. So these kids can take a, a course here and a little prep somewhere else and start asking for jobs in theaters and learn their craft along the way um, by cobbling together courses and maybe workshops and maybe attending conferences and talking to people and mentoring, uh, you know, doing mentorships with people or apprenticeships with people. Um, and cobbling together a career. Playwriting is very competitive and yet every director I meet is looking for the playwrights. They're looking for really good playwrights. All over the country, there, there's an abundance of directors, an abundance of actors. Everybody wants the playwrights. Petty believes that techies are a different breed and often find their work appreciated in ways other than the applause afforded the actors. We do get acknowledgments usually at the end of a show and a lot of productions. The Audience, the actors will acknowledge the uh, booth where the, the show is, the technical side is run from. So it's nice to get that applause from the audience, which is small, but the real benefit uh, is in listening to the audience. You know, the techies kind of get to move through the audience and, and listen to the responses, and we get the feedback in another way. You know, other than applause, we just kind of hear it. And, and you sense it in the audience when you see them reacting to the lighting and to the sound and those kind of elements. Redfield says what's important to her and her colleagues is providing students with the real life experience of the theater industry. It's a business. It is a business. We're here to sell tickets. But we're also here to kind of um, be seen, you know, and, and have our art be seen. And, and to work together and, most importantly, to teach the students what it's like to really work in a theater, the amount of hard work that it takes um, and the boring work that it sometimes takes, the steps to get to that point. Um, so that's kind of the tech side, and I think you either love it or you don't. The work of those in technical theater is no more or less demanding than that of the actors on stage, and according to Petty, the BCC theater program is one of the most well-rounded he's seen. There is such a support for the students here. Um, there is no separation of technical and acting, and uh, at, at there, as there is at a lot of larger institutions, they really want you to focus on just what you're there to do. Here there's a mingling, and there's a support from Ryland Brenner and the other professors here to, to get the students encouraged in that. And the facilities here are wonderful. We have a beautiful big theater um, that is comparable to a lot of Broadway houses that I've been to and definitely superior to a lot of houses I've worked in in Boston. Um, so there's a wonderful opportunity here. And, and I would encourage any student that is interested in theater to definitely come here. I believe they'll get exactly the kind of experience they're looking for and the training that they're going to need. There are many opportunities for theater students to continue with their education. The college has transfer agreements with many baccalaureate theater programs, including ones at Bridgewater and Salem State Colleges. We'll have more around BCC right after this.
Welcome back. The BCC Arts Program has long been a staple here at the college, and recently students had the opportunity to showcase their work outside the walls of the Fall River campus. Students in the college's Visual Arts Club had a unique opportunity to display their work at some prominent public displays. Working with Fall River's Arts United, the club was able to utilize dormant downtown storefront space to display their wares. Art department coordinator and club advisor Eric Durant says the opportunity was part of the Storefront Artists Project, a program which uses art as a way to increase foot traffic downtown. As soon as I heard about it, I immediately made the connection that, wow, this is, this is a great way to connect the, um, the Visual Art Club to the community, to, in essence, get us out of H Building and get us out into the community instead of showing work inside our walls all the time to show our work to the public, um, which is, you know, ultimately, I think, one of the goals that many artists have, to have their work seen. So this provides us with a space to show that work and to, and to interact with the community and tell people what, a little bit about you know, what we do and, and why, um, what BCC is doing for the community at large. The students' debut came during the Fall River Open Studio Tour earlier last month. Durant says he was pleased that many people got to experience BCC's art department up close. We had a lot of people walking by who, like you said, um, you know, maybe didn't even know that the, the that BCC had a visual arts club, or that they even that we even have an active art department here. Um, we have a, a really large art department that has an enormous amount of output, um, and it was it was nice to see people you know walking in off the street, coming in, um, being excited by the work. Uh, we definitely got a lot of positive feedback. We had a lot of visitors from the college, but also people from the community um, who are doing the open studios tour. Um, got to see us. Visual Art Club President Scott Burr says the exposure was a positive experience for the students. I'm happy that Fall River is trying to uh, op open up its like its art to the public. I mean, I mean, like uh, interest art to the public, and that um, and this is exactly what the students here need because, like, like, like uh, it's um, sometimes like a lot of the a lot of the art students here are very bashful about their art like like so um, so I, I just think it's a good opportunity for all of everybody. Duran says the college will continue to use the downtown space for as long as possible. My goal is to definitely have a long-term relationship with uh, with Arts United and with the other cultural uh, particularly the art um, arts and culture uh, organizations in the city of Fall River. I think that um, I think that in terms of you know the the mission of the community college is to serve those community and, and those communities and to and to have active collaborations with the artists that are that are working there. That's um, that's something that's only going to going to benefit the uh, the college and the community. So it's it's a win-win. Visual Arts Club students also had their work displayed last month during a show at Gallery X in downtown New Bedford. In this month's alumni in your community, we talked to a local woman who stayed close to home and used the BCC to further both her professional career and her personal interests. Hi, I'm Kathy Oldred, BCC class of 1990. After high school, I decided to go right to work because my aunt had always worked in a bank and it seemed like a great job. And then I was offered this position here at Fall River Municipal and I loved what I was doing. I also didn't really want to go away to college. So it took me several years and when my younger nephew decided that he was going off to college, I kind of thought, my gosh, I've missed out on so much. So that's when I decided I was going to go back to BCC and I started taking a few classes. Um, at that time, a, I didn't really think it was going to help my job here at the credit union, but I thought it would be a fun thing to do. When I first got to BCC, I took a couple of business classes. I took an accounting class. Um, I took a management class. Those were fun. I started to take a marketing class, but I didn't really enjoy that. I switched over to a medieval history class, and I fell in love. 
Um, medieval history is one of my absolute favorite subjects, and I just liked reading about it. And I found going to those particular classes, I became alive. It was a fun thing to do. I looked forward to it each week. And at that point, I came back to work, and I said to my manager, I really don't want to study business anymore. And I started to take as many history classes and as many literature classes as I could. In the beginning, they were a little bit confused, but this was going back several years, and not too many of our employees were actually going to college. So they felt that as long as it was going to help me and was going to make me feel more confident and more comfortable, they were, they were fine with it. They allowed me to continue taking those particular courses. And there was no problem from that point on. After I graduated from BCC, I decided that I did want to further my career in school, and so I moved over to UMass Dartmouth, and I had received my degree in liberal science, and I moved over there, and I went into humanities and social services. Again, it was a continuation of the classes that I felt were going to help me grow as a person. Well, again, lots of literature, lots of history, um, maybe some sociology, some psychology, some fun classes. What I learned specifically at BCC was the fact that I could build up my self-confidence. I could then stand in front of a group of people. I could talk. I could express my opinion in a business meeting and not be afraid that I was saying something foolish or that the other managers would perhaps cut me down and say, no, that just doesn't make sense. I also learned how to write and be able to present my ideas in writing. So one of the positions that I did take on was writing procedure and policy for the credit union's retail department, which was a very important job. The fact that my self-confidence grew and that my writing skills increased meant that I was promoted first to an assistant loan manager position, then to the branch manager's position, and now I am the training manager for the credit union. That itself is a brand new position. We've never had a training manager. So I am now responsible for talking to the new employees who come in. I do some interviewing, but I actually conduct all of their training as far as how to work with the teller system, how to work with compliance, how to follow all of our regulations. I also conduct all of the mandatory training here at the credit union for the whole staff. Um, it's, a, it's very rewarding that I now have the confidence and the ability to do this type of work where I would not have been able to do that before if I hadn't gone to BCC. I have actually lived on the same street my whole life. I came home from Charlton Memorial Hospital and I plan to stay there until I move to the next spot. <laughs> um, I've lived on Summerfield Street. I absolutely love the city of Fall River. One of the reasons I was so glad to be able to go to BCC is because it was close. It was um, a, a warm campus. It was a welcoming campus, and it was also community-based. So there were people there that I actually knew from the community, and I enjoyed that a lot. I am not married. I am single. I do have the most fabulous dog who shares my life. But I have decided that I would like to be involved in different areas of the community. So what I have done is started to teach junior achievement classes. I've been doing that for about a 10 year period. And I love going into the classroom, pretending that I am a teacher for an hour a week. And I go over the lessons with them. I think it is a great way to get children on their way to have a better career and a better life. One of the things I also do as part of JA is in stress on them how important it is for them to continue with their education, and I always tell them about my time at BCC. Other things I've become involved in is the South Coast Opera Club. I have been the treasurer and the president. I am also involved in the Greater Fall River Symphony Society, which, as you know, is housed at BCC. That's where they perform. That is where they um, rehearse, and it's great to be part, again, of more community activities. I love to bring BCC up in a particular conversation, especially when I'm interviewing new employees. Many of them are just coming out of high school, and they're not sure what they want to do with their life. They think they'd like to go to college. I immediately tell them about BCC, explain how the classes are so easy to take, how they will fit into the schedules. I also like to let employees know who are here now who think they would like to perhaps move up within the organization, but they do need some education. Going to BCC is a great way to do it. Also like to stress that because um, people, when they are going into school, they might need to have a little bit of flexibility with their schedule. We try and work with them. If they've got to take classes, we'll let them get out a little bit early just so that they can get to school, especially BCCs right up the street from us. I never thought while I was at school that I was going to get to the position that I am today. First of all, I never thought I'd be able to do such a thing. 
but I will definitely say that going to BCC and taking those classes and learning how to think, which was an incredibly important part of taking any type of class that you can get from point A to point F and understand that there are multiple steps in between, um, I learned that at BCC. And then now I'm doing this new job as a training manager. Again, I have to go from point A to point F and figure out what's got to be done in between. So it's taught me incredibly great thought processes in order to be able to do my job as well as I can. Here are some other news and notes now from around BCC. The men's and women's basketball seasons are underway. It's the first time in over 30 years that intercollegiate basketball has been contested here at BCC. Both teams are off to a mixed start. Women's head coach Joy Gonzalez says despite the typical setbacks affiliated with a new team, she's been pleased with her squad. One of the big challenges that I didn't really have to do is as a coach, you have to try to get personalities to mesh. And the girls did a fabulous job with that. Even girls that have come late on into the season, they've welcomed them with open arms. And that's, that's a coach's dream. That's why I say these girls are a coach's dream because I didn't have to deal with that. The challenges I have are the bodies, having the players, because I came late, didn't have enough time to recruit, and I've just been recruiting as our season has been going on. The men's team under head coach Rob Delalue is 2-3 and three as of this report, while the women sit at 1-2. and two. Congratulations to BCC President Dr. John Sprega for being selected as President of the Year in Region 1 of NASPA, the Organization of Student Affairs Personnel. Dr. Sprega was recognized for his support and understanding of the student affairs function here at the college. Dr. Sprega is now a candidate for National President of the Year, which will be awarded at the NASPA conference this coming spring. Best wishes go out to Executive Dean David Feeney as he retires from the college after a 38-year career, which saw him begin as faculty and end in administration. There were a couple of instances on campus recently where the future interests of BCC students were on display. Nearly 30 local businesses were on hand at the Commonwealth College Center as part of the BCC Seasonal Job Recruitment Fair. It was a great opportunity for students to find ways to earn some extra money during these trying financial times. Also at the Commonwealth College Center was the annual College Transfer Fair, where local and regional baccalaureate institutions provided representatives to answer questions of students looking to further their educational pursuits. These difficult financial times are putting a strain on many people's pocketbooks, but the Massburg chapter at BCC is making sure we do not forget those less fortunate this holiday season. The organization set up a series of events last month to spotlight the plight of the homeless in our country. Massburg representative Alex Robertson says instances of homelessness is growing and is amplified during the financial crisis. I think the Hunger Homelessness Awareness Week is more pertinent now than ever because what we're going to see is seeing rising foreclosures. Like at the root of this economic crisis is a problem of the house, uh, housing crisis, falling housing prices. You're seeing people being able to able pay their mortgages. There's going to be a lot more people out in the streets. There's a lot of people that, because they lost their job, can't, are entering into food insecurity. Um, so yes, it's, it's totally related to the economic crisis that's going on right now. Robertson points out that 12% of Americans are considered poor and our local, state and national political leaders need to take notice. It really drove home the idea of getting politicians to help out the lower classes instead of, you know, a lot of students express frustration that we bailing out banks and uh, you know, really helping out the rich to and, and stabilize our whole economy but uh, not helping out the people that really need the help and they, they need it right now and uh, the problem's getting worse with our economic crisis. That's all for Around BCC this month. I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great holiday, and we'll see you in 2009.